अहम वर्द ते सरनेना सह पांचासी लानी या चामी दुतियां भी अहम बंद ते सरनेना सह पांचासी लानी या चामी दतियां भी अहम बंद ते सरनेना सह पांचासी लानी या चामी नमो तस्स भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धस्स 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 नमो तस्सा भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसा नमो तस्सा भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसा बुद्धं सरणं गच्छामि बुद्धं सरणं गच्छामि धम्मं सरणं गच्छामि धम्मं सरणं गच्छामि संघं सरनं गच्छामि संघं सरनं गच्छामि दुतियंपि बुद्धं सरनं गच्छामि दुतियंपि बुद्धं सरनं गच्छामि दुतियंपि धमं सरनं गच्छामि दुतियंपि धमं सरनं गच्छामि दुतियंपि संघं सरनं गच्छामि दुतियंपि संघं सरनं गच्छामि तत्यंपि बुद्धं सरनं गच्छामि तत्यंपि बुद्धं सरनं गच्छामि तत्यंपि धमं सरनं गच्छामि तत्यंपि धमं सरनं गच्छामि तत्यंपि संघं सरनं गच्छामि तत्यंपि संघं सरनं गच्छामि इसरनगमनं नित्यं आमते पानाति पातावेरमनिसिखा पदं समादियामि पानाति पातावेरमनिसिखा पदं समाधियामि अदिन्ना दाना वेरमनि सिखा पदं समाधियामि अदिन्ना दाना वेरमनि सिखा पदं समाधियामि कामेशु मिचाचारा वेरमनि सिखा पदं समाधियामि काम में सुमिचा चारा वैरमणि सिखा पदं समाधियामि अदिन्ना दाना वैरमणि सिखा पदं समाधियामि अदिन्ना दाना वैरमणि सिखा पदं समाधियामि काम में सुमिचा चारा वैरमणि सिखा पदं समाधियामि कामे सुमिचा चारा वेरमि सिखा पदं समाधियामि मुसावा दावेरमि सिखा पदं समाधियामि मुसावा दावेरमि सिखा पदं समाधियामि सुरामेराया मज्जपमादा थाना वेरमि सिखा पदं समाधियामि सूरा मेराया मज्जा पमादता ना वेरमणि सिखा पदं समाधियामि हिमानि पंचा सिखा पदानि सिलेन सुगतिंग्यंति सिलेन भोग संपदा सिलेन निबुटिंग्यंति तस्मासि लंगविसो धाये साधु 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 Paragraph 79. What is the source of these temperaments? And how is it to be known that such a person is of greedy temperament, that such a person is one of those beginning with hating temperament? 
what suits one of what kind of temperament? Herein, as some say, the first three kinds of temperament to begin with have their source in previous habit, and they have their source in elements and humors. Apparently, one of greedy temperament has formerly had plenty of desirable tasks and gratifying work to do, or has reappeared here after dying in a heaven. And one of hating temperament has formerly had plenty of stabbing and torturing and brutal work to do, or has reappeared here after dying in one of the hells or the naga serpent existences. And one of deluded temperament has formerly drunk a lot of intoxicants and neglected learning and questioning, or has reappeared here after dying in the animal existence. It is in this way that they have their source in previous habit, they say. Then a person is of deluded temperament because two elements are prominent. That is to say, the earth element and water element. He is of hating temperament because of the other two elements are prominent, but he is of greedy temperament because of all four are equal. And as regards the humors, one of greedy temperament has phlegm in excess, and one of deluded temperament has wind in excess. Or one of deluded temperament has phlegm in excess, and one of greedy temperament has wind in excess. So they have their source in the elements and the humors, they say. Now, it can rightly be objected that not all of those who have had plenty of desirable tasks and gratifying work to do and who have reappeared here after dying in heaven are of greedy temperament, or the others respectively of hating and deluded temperament. And there is no such law of prominence of elements as that asserted. And only the pair, greed and delusion, are given in the law of humors, and even that subsequently contradicts itself. And no source for even one among those beginning with one of faithful temperament is given. Consequently, this definition is indecisive. 83. The following is the exposition given according to the opinion of the teachers of the commentaries. Or this is said in the explanation of prominence. The fact that these beings have prominence of greed, prominence of hate, prominence of delusion is governed by previous root cause. For when in one man, at the moment of his accumulating rebirth producing karma, greed is strong and non greed is weak, non hate and non delusion are strong, and hate and delusion are weak, then his weak non greed is unable to prevail over his greed. But his non-hate and non-delusion, being strong, are able to prevail over his hate and delusion. That is why, on being reborn through rebirth linking given by that karma, he has greed, is good-natured and unangry, and possesses understanding with knowledge like a lightning flash. So hum humor is a translation of dosa. Dosa meaning disorder. And dosa, the most common definition of dosa is anger, but here it also means disorder. So there's three disorders: disorder of phlegm, disorder of wind, like like the winds in the body, and disorder of blood. I think is the third one. 84. When, at the moment of another's accumulating karma, greed and hate are strong, and non-greed and non-hate weak, and non-delusion is strong, and delusion weak, 
then in the way already stated he has both greed and hate but possesses understanding with knowledge like a lightning flash like the elder tatta abhaya when at the moment of his accumulating karma greed non hate and delusion are strong and the others are weak then in the way already stated he both has greed and is dull but is good tempered and unangry like the elder bahula likewise when <laughs> at the moment of his accumulating karma the three namely greed hate and delusion are strong and non greed etc are weak then in the way already stated he has both greed and hate and is deluded 85 when at the moment of his accumulating karma non greed hate and delusion are strong and the others are weak then in the way already stated he has little defilement and is unshakable even on seeing a heavenly object but he has hate and is slow in understanding when at the moment of his accumulating karma non greed non hate and non delusion are strong and the rest weak then in the way already stated he has no greed and no hate and is good tempered but slow in understanding likewise when at the moment of his accumulating karma non greed hate and non delusion are strong and the rest weak then in the way already stated he both has no greed and possesses understanding but has hate and is irascible likewise when at the moment of his accumulating karma the three that is non hate non greed and non delusion are strong greed etc are weak then in the way already stated he has no greed and no hate and possesses understanding like the elder maha sangarakita bante what what is at the moment of his accumulating karma is it the moment when he is doing the action yeah it's, it says in 83 rebirth producing karma i don't know the intricacies of how the different roots are involved in the rebirth process seems complicated 86 one who as it is said here has greed is one of greedy temperament one who has hate and one who is dull are respectively of hating temperament and deluded temperament one who possesses understanding is one of intelligent temperament one who has no greed and one who has no hate are of faithful temperament because they are naturally trustful or just as one who is reborn through karma accompanied by non delusion is of intention intelligent temperament so one who is reborn through karma accompanied by by strong faith is a faithful temperament one who is reborn through karma accompanied by thoughts of sense desire of speculative temperament and one who is reborn through karma accompanied by mixed greed etc is of mixed temperament so it is the karma productive of rebirth linking and accompanied by some one among the things beginning with greed that should be understood as the sources of the temperaments 87 but it was asked and how it is to be known that this person of greedy temperament and so on this is explained as follows by the po- posture by the action by eating seeing and so on by the kind of states occurring may temperament be recognized herein by the posture when one of greedy temperament is walking in his usual manner he walks carefully puts his foot down slowly puts it puts it down evenly lifts it up evenly and his step is springy one of hating temperament walks as through 
quivered digging with the points of his feet. Puts his foot down quick, quickly, lifts it up, it up quickly, and his step is dragged along. One of deluded temperament walks with a perplexed gait, puts his foot down hesitantly, lifts it up hesitantly, and his step is pressed down suddenly. And this is said in the account of the origin of the Mag Magandhi Asut. The step of one of greedy nature will be springy, the step of one of hating nature dragged along. Deluded, he will suddenly press down his steps, and one without defilement has a step like this. I don't understand the last line. It says, and one without defilement has a step like this. What is like this? Like what? Uh, like nothing. Just so. No excess. 89. The one of greedy temperament is confident and graceful. That of one of hating temperament is rigid. That of one of dilute temperament is muddled, likewise in sitting. And one of greedy temperament spreads his bed unhurriedly, lies down slowly, composing his limbs, and he sleeps in a confident manner. When woken, instead of getting up quickly, he gives his answer slowly as though doubtful. One of hating temperament spreads his bed hastily now. With his body flung down, he steeps with a scowl. When woken, he gets up quickly and answers as though annoyed. One of deluded temperament spreads his bed all awry and sleeps mostly face downwards with his body sprawling. When what woken, he gets up slowly, saying, hum. Um, but uh, why does it seem that those with greedy temperaments behave somehow like we can say that well, confident and graceful? Greed is usually associated with confidence. Someone who is greedy is very confident. It, is it also conceit there? In the confidence, I mean. No. And when we look, like, like for instance, when they describe uh, when he spreads his bed unhurriedly, un, un lies down slowly, composing his, his limbs, um, they seem like uh, good behavior. Well, people who are greedy tend to tend to appear very good behavior. They tend to be very content, very undisturbed. They can even appear to be enlightened. If you ever talk to people who say, you know, all you need to do is be positive. Uh, and they, they appear to be almost enlightened. As long as they get what they want. They have no sense of urgency, no sense of a need to change anything, a need to fix anything. They, uh, as long as they get what they want. And they do their best to make sure they get what they want. So that's why you have to shake them up. A person with greedy temperament, you'll see what you have to do to them. 90. Since those of faithful temperament, etc., are parallel to those of greedy temperament, etc., their postures are therefore like those described above. This, firstly, is how the temperaments may be recognized by the posture. Paragraph number 91. By the action. Also in the acts of sweeping, etc., one of greedy temperament grasps the broom well, and he sweeps cleanly and evenly without hurrying or scattering the sand, as if he were strewing Sinduvara flowers. One of hating temperament grasps the broom tightly, and he sweeps uncleanly and unevenly with a harsh noise hurriedly throwing up the sand on each side. One of deluded temperament grasps the broom loosely, and he sweeps neither cleanly nor evenly, mixing the sand up and turning it over. 
I have a question. Since these temperaments are clearly from the as defined in paragraph eighty three, something that occur get created at the time of the creation of the life itself. Can you kind of conclude this is not necessarily easy, at least in order to change, and especially given the way how these paragraphs are describing them by the posture at certain point of time, then some sort of permanency because it was created at the time of creation of life. Or is there? Am I wrong in perceiving that? I mean, to be honest, it's not really going to be defined at the moment of rebirth. It's just going to be the person's character from past lives carried over. It's not really who you were at that last moment. It's who you were and who you developed, the, the habits you developed in past lives as well. Shouldn't all be determined at the moment of rebirth. Okay, but the way they speak, these paragraphs at least they describe, does it also, I mean, I'm getting a sense that it is something associated with a person rather than a person at a given time. I mean, there's no, it's not sense of right now he is of the temperament of uh, faithfulness. Right now, he's of the temperament of anger. It's more like this person is of the nature of anger, or uh, for that matter, in this case, greed and yeah. uh, hatred. So yes. it's associated with the person rather than a person at a specific time. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so some sort of heaviness, I mean, associated with the person for a life rather than some very difficult to change, at least. Well, that's the whole point is if you don't if you don't focus on those qualities the person's never going to progress because that's what they have a problem with or or it's it's how to relate to them because three of these are not really problems three of them are, are on the good side right anyway i'm i'm getting a sense that there's going to be a lot of questions about this section and i really don't i, I really would dissuade you from delving too deeply into all this stuff a lot of it is conceptual you have to remember that most of this section is going to be very conceptual because it's dealing it's the samatha section i mean the, these temperaments are not they're not not exactly abhidhamma they're practical things that teachers have to deal with and it's going to be very conceptual talking about a lot of these things so you're better off just this section just listening and and absorbing it and listening to the stories and getting an idea of some of the things that are possible what'll be really interesting is is how the uh, how the mind works seeing how the mind uh, works to allow for the various states that it's going to talk about it gives you a sense of what is possible and and how it is possible to attain extraordinary states that normally we're not able to attain. But these characters, I, 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 this is something that's come up often before, is people are a little bit overly interested in these six character types when they're not even really all that, well, they're not at all uh, of interest to someone who practices mindfulness. These are for, the, for a teacher who is trying to figure out which summit a meditation object to give to their students. Thank you. Still, it's interesting. I mean, it's hard to, to, avoid, to, to prevent yourself from wondering which you are and, and thinking about, now you'll think about, how do I step? <laughs> which, exactly. which way do I step? How do I eat? I mean, that's just mostly just um, self-consciousness, conceit trying to d judge yourself, whether you're good or bad, the good things, trying to th think of worrying about about being one of these. Am I? Am I this? Am I that? Which is all uh, moha. Paragraph 92. As with sweeping, so too with any action such as washing and dyeing robes and so on, one of greedy temperament acts skillfully, gently, evenly, and carefully. One of hating temperament acts tensely, stiffly, and unevenly. One of deluded temperament acts unskillfully, as if muddled, unevenly, and indecisively. 
Also, one of greedy temperament wears his robe neither too tightly nor too loosely, confidently at all round, all level, all round. <clears throat> one of heating temperament wears it too tight and not level all round. One of deluded temperament wears it loosely and in a muddled way. Those of faithful temperament, etc., should be understood in the same way as those dis just described since they are parallel. This is how the temperaments may be recognized by the actions. Paragraph 93. By eating. One of greedy temperament likes eating rich, sweet food. When eating, he makes a round lump, not too big, and eats unhurriedly, savoring the various tastes. He enjoys getting something good. One of hating temperament likes eating rough, sour food. When eating, he makes a lump that fills his mouth, and he eats hurriedly without savoring the taste. He is aggrieved when he gets something not good. One of deluded temperament has no settled choice. When eating, he makes a small, unrounded lump, and as he eats, he drops bits into his dish, smearing his face with his mind astray, thinking of this and that. Also, those of faithful temperament, etc., should be understood in the same way as those just described, since they are parallel. This is how the temperament may be recognized by eating, and by seeing, and so on. When one of greedy temperament sees even a slightly pleasing visual object, he looks long as if surprised. He seizes on trivial virtues, discounts genuine faults, and when departing, he does so with regret as if unwilling to leave. When one of hating temperament sees even a slightly unpleasing visible object, he avoids looking long as if he were tired. He picks out trivial faults, discounts genuine virtues, and when departing, he does so without regret as if anxious to leave. When one of deluded temperament sees any sort of visible object, he copies what others do. If he hears others criticizing, he criticizes. If he hears others praising, he praises. But actually, he feels equanimity in himself, the equanimity of unknowing. So too with sounds and so on. And those of faithful temperament, etc., should be understood in the same way as those just described since they are parallel. This is how the temperaments may be recognized by seeing and so on. 95. By the kind of states occurring in one of greedy temperament, there is frequent occurrence of such states as deceit, fraud, pride, evilness, and wishes, greatness of wishes, discontent, foppery, and personal vanity. In one of hating temperament, there is frequent occurrence of such state as, states as anger, enmity, disparaging, domineering, envy, and avarice. In one of deluded temperament, there is frequent occurrence of such state as stiffness, torpor, agitation, worry, uncertainty, and holding one tenaciously with refusal of relinquishing. In one of faithful temperament, there is frequent occurrence of such state as free generosity, desire to see noble ones, desire to hear the good Dhamma, great gladness, ingenuousness, honesty, and trust in things that inspire trust. In one of intelligent temperament, there is frequent occurrence of such states as readiness to be spoken to, possession of good friends, knowledge of the right amount in eating, mindfulness, and full awareness, devotion to wakefulness, a sense of urgency about things that should inspire a sense of urgency, and wisely directed endeavor. In one of speculative temperament, there is frequent occurrence of such state as talkativeness, so sociability, boredom, with devotion to the profitable, failure to finish undertakings, smoking by night and flaming by day. 
uh, si uh, Majima Nikaya uh, 144, that is to say hatching plants at night and putting them into effect by day, and mental running hither and thither. So this is how the temperaments may be recognized by the kind of states occurring. 96. However, these directions for recognizing the temperaments have not been handed down in their entirety in either the texts or the commentaries. They are only expressed according to the opinion of the teachers and cannot therefore be treated as authentic. For even those of hating temperament can exhibit postures, etc., ascribed to greedy temperament when they try diligently, and postures, etc., never arise with distinct characteristics in a person of mixed temperament. Only such directions for recognizing temperament as are given in the commentaries should be treated as authentic. For this is said, a teacher who has acquired penetration of minds will know the temperament and will explain a meditation subject accordingly. One who has not should question the pupil. So it is by penetration of minds or by questioning the person that it can be known whether he is one of greedy temperament or of those beginning with hating temperament. 97. What suits one of what kind of temperament? A suitable lodging for one of greedy temperament has an unwashed sill and stands level with the ground, and it can be either an overhanging rock with an unprepared drip ledge, a grass hut, or a leaf house, etc. It ought to be spattered with dirt, full of bats, dilapidated, too high or too low, in bleak surroundings, threatened by lions, tigers, etc., with a muddy, uneven path, where even the bed and chair are full of bugs, and it should be ugly and unsightly, exciting, loathing as soon as looked at. Suitable inner and outer garments are those that have torn off edges with threads hanging down all around like a net cake, harsh to the touch like hemp, soiled, heavy, and hard to wear. And the right kind of bowl for him is an ugly clay bowl disfigured by stoppings and joints, or a heavy and misshapen iron bowl as unappet unappetizing as a skull. The right kind of road for him on which to wander for alms is disagreeable, with no village near, and uneven. The right kind of village for him in which to wander for alms is where people wander about as if oblivious of him, where, as he is about to leave without getting alms, even from a single family, people call him into the sitting hall, saying, Come, venerable sir and give him gruel and rice, but do so as casually as if they were putting a cow in a pen. Suitable people to serve him are slaves or workmen who are unsightly, ill-favored, with dirty clothes, ill-smelling, and disgusting, who serve him his gruel and rice as if they were throwing it rudely at him. The right kind of gruel and rice and hard food is poor, unsightly, made up of millet, burusaka, broken rice, etc., stale buttermilk, sour gruel, curry of old vegetables, or anything at all that is merely for filling the stomach. The right kind of posture for him is either standing or walking. The object of his contemplation should be any of the color casinas, beginning with the blue, whose color is not pure. This is what suits one of greedy temperament. 98. A suitable resting place for one of hating temperament is 
not too high or too low, provided with shade and water, with well proportionate walls, posts, and steps, with well prepared frieze work and lattice work, brightened with various kinds of painting, with an even, smooth, soft flow, adorned with festoons of flowers and canopy of many colored cloth like Brahma God's divine place with bed and chat covered with well-spread, clean, pretty cars, smelling sweetly of flowers and perfumes, and scents set about for homely comfort, which makes one happy and glad at the mere sight of it. 99. The right kind of road to this lodging is free from any sort of danger, traverses clean, even ground, and has been properly prepared. And here it is best that the lodgings furnishings are not too many in order to avoid hiding places for insects, bugs, snakes, and rats. Even a single bed and chair only. The right kind of inner and outer garments for him are of any superior stuff such as china cloth, Samara cloth, silk, fine cotton, fine linen, of either single or double thickness quite light and well dyed, quite pure of color to benefit an ascetic. The right kind of bowl is made of iron, as well shaped as a water bubble, as polished as a gem, spotless, and of quite pure color to benefit an ascetic. The right kind of road on which to wander for alms is free of dangers, level, agreeable, with the village neither too far nor too near. The right kind of village in which to wander for alms is where people thinking, now our Lord is coming, prepare a seat in a sprinkled, swept place and going out to meet him, take his bowl, lead him to the house, sit him on a prepared seat and serve him carefully with their, with their own hands. Unquote. Suitable people to serve him are handsome, pleasing, well bathed, well anointed, scented, with the perfume of incense and the smell of flowers, adorned with apparel made of variously dyed, clean, pretty cloth, who do their work carefully. The right kind of cruel rice and hard food has color, smell, and taste possesses nutritive essence and is inviting, superior in every way and enough for his wants. The right kind of posture for him is lying down or sitting. The object of his contemplation should be any one of the color casinas beginning with the blue whose color is quite pure. This is what suits one of eating temperament. In the previous paragraph, it said beginning with the blue whose color is not pure. And here it says beginning with the blue whose color is quite pure. I mean, this is the color of the casina which is not pure or quite pure. Okay, then probably don't understand what casina is. Casinas are coming up. They will be explained. Casinas are quite interesting and quite helpful for understanding some of the aspects of the, the Buddhist teaching uh, relating to the various attainments, samatha attainments, and also very useful for, for the attainment of magical powers and so on. Some things I don't think this text goes into are how the various casinas are related to various sort of base magical powers. The different casinas have different qualities that allow them to or that allow one to cultivate various extraordinary mental faculties, like uh, seeing here. things far away, hearing things far away, and so on. But I think it's here. I think I read, read it in here. It's explained. Well, these casinas are talked about, but I don't think um, there are some things that aren't explained. I mean, they're not meant to be explained, but... I've, ta I've heard monks talk about how various casinas can be used for various things, and it goes, they go into some detail. Thank you, Wendy. 
I wait for learning more about the sinas and also look up Ebo where it is mentioned. Thank you. I'm sorry, I don't know what is Kastina. Are those meditation object? Sinas are colors like elements, earth, water, wind, fire. I still can. Thank you. It seemed really, I mean, kind of cruel to the greedy personality. And uh, is there a parallel with um, with faithful that uh, they should uh, have this very rough lodging and clothing and everything? So yeah, I'm not totally convinced by his parallels. How he dismisses the others as being parallel not in all cases, but. Someone who is uh, faithful needs to be shaken up, just like someone who is greedy. So giving them things that uh, surprise them and uh, upset them can be valuable. But not for 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 a long time, right? So well, again, remember you're looking at this from a as a from as a vipassana practitioner. Mm -hmm. For samatha, it's not as not as clear cut. I have a question about the. The last three temperaments. So if those are supposed to be the, I guess, nicer temperaments, I guess reading about the last one in particular, I'm not sure how like having your mind running here and there is supposed to be like opposite of the others. Parallel, but it's not a good. It's not a good one. I mean, it's it's not a matter of whether they're good or bad. It's a matter of the differences in people. Again, I'm not really impressed by all of this. This is all Samatha stuff. I wouldn't put too much weight on it. You can see he's not all that impressed by it either. <laughs> Just, you know, people say this about it and that about it. and yeah, It's all a lot of... problem with this stuff is it, it's the realm of Utujana, right? It's not yet the realm of enlightened beings. So teachers can be very proficient in these and still be unenlightened. And so a lot of talk and literature can arise from people who even have wrong views which leads to some muddying i think but practically it's quite valuable for if a person is going to teach samatha i mean it's clear to see how this could be valuable for someone trying to decide which of the 40 meditation subjects because they are quite different which of the 40 to give to a specific student and if i may why would somebody want to give a meditation object that is not the breath or I don't know, within some within the sense of the vipassana meditation. Well, it's more powerful to go the, the full route. So for those people who had the time and the environment that was supportive of these things, there there is some merit in being very deliberate and there's a greatness to the attainment of samatha. I mean, honestly, I, I think it, it's easy to blow all this out of proportion. And to some extent, the extent with which he goes into, he delves into samatha here is perhaps excessive. Or it's, it's, it's um, disproportionate to the place that this sort of meditation would have in the Buddha's teaching, because obviously you don't see the Buddha talking so much about these things. But what's great about it, regardless, is how complete it is and how it gives you a contrast. It gives you contrast and it gives you depth and breadth of understanding of what is possible for the mind. You're going to see a lot of surprising things that, that are possible in terms of mental attainments. And this helps to get a broader sense of the nature of reality, I think. It's like... Uh graduating with honors i mean graduation is graduation whether you quit honors or not but this is something extra i don't i don't know about it with honors it's about it's like graduating with a minor in something else you can take a minor something or a lot of extracurriculars or something like that honors might be uh patisambida or something like that I'm not sure that these would be considered honors some of the time. Yeah, probably. All right, that's all for me this week. Have a good week, everyone. Sad. Thank you, Bhante. Sad. 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 S